Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today, I wanna to demonstrate to you how we now have the ability to warp audio like in Ableton, but using Smart Tempo in Logic. So, number one, Smart Tempo. This was a new feature introduced in 10.4, not too long ago at the time of this video. And the major perceived value of Smart Tempo was now you no longer have to record to a click. Instead, you can record at whatever timing feels best to you, and Logic will analyze your performance and adapt the grid and the tempo to you, which is amazing. You know, time before that, you always had to use a metronome or, you know, you know, suggested that you use a metronome and you would hit record and you would try to play the best you could to the grid and to the metronome. And I love the grid. I love the metronome because you can get a bunch of great performers together to record in time. You know, now you have a tight performance that you can edit very easily. But the problem with that is the fact that, you know, sometimes what makes music interesting and awesome to us is the little variations in humanity of a performance. And when you lock everything into the grid, it sort of loses that flavor. But there are plenty of videos on that aspect of Smart Tempo, and I'm sure I'll do one eventually too, but I wanna talk about something that I'm really excited about, and that's how easily you can bring audio tracks into the session and have it lock into the project tempo or vice versa, have the project tempo lock in to the tempo within your audio file. So. There's three options to pick from under the BPM here now, and that's keep, adapt, and auto. Keep is logic as usual. Nothing changes. You have the grid and you have your tempo, and that's that. Adapt is where logic now is listening to your performance and or your imported audio files, and it's adapting the tempo track here to that. And then there's auto where logic somehow figures out when you want to keep the tempo and when you want to adapt it. But I just kind of hang between keep and adapt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to adapt and I'm going to bring in an audio file here and they're going to be drums. I'm going to bring these drums in and we're going to watch how the tempo track is going to adapt to this file. And just like so, it's adapted. And you can see there's a lot of little variations within this drum track. Hit play and I'll have the click on. Which is so cool. We can also go vice versa. So let me remove this. And instead I'm gonna keep Project Tempo and I'm gonna go into the Smart Tempo Project settings here. Oh, come on. And there's two options now, default for flex and follow region setting. I'm gonna set the imported audio file to now lock in the bars and beats of the audio file to the tempo here. So check it out. I'm gonna bring that same drum pattern and watch this. Uh, I don't wanna import. Here we go. And that's so freaking awesome. Now I can set this to, you know, 200 BPM, which is an amazing breakbeat sort of thing, or 50. So, so cool. I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna go back into this menu and set this to off. And I'm going to adapt again. So let's bring back that audio file because I want this to adapt. Okay, so now the beauty of this is, is if you bring drummer in or a loop, let's say, let's go instruments and I was checking out some cool synths. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna bring this in. And we gotta just make sure this lands on the same beat. Did anything get moved around? No. Now, here's the situation when it comes to Smart Tempo is that you're gonna constantly be adapting the mode here. 
because you see that it's in red, it's it's kind of watching for the next move I make to adapt the tempo. And I don't want it to, I want to keep this tempo of the drum. So I'm going to set this to keep. Now let's check it out. All right. Now what's even sweeter in this particular case, there's a lot of tempo shifts. So I can't just quite easily drag this up or down. Check it out. See multiple tempo events detected. So use the tempo track to further tempo editing. So you can highlight within the tempo track here, which is in the global commands or the global, you know, menu here. I'm going to bring this up, but you see everything moved for the drums here, which means that the tempo of the drums is not locked to the project tempo. So everything got moved around. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on these drums and then we have the file tempo editor. I'm going to go under actions and I'm going to adapt the region tempo to the project tempo and line down beats. So there really should be no movement in this case because the tempo in logic was derived from this drum track. But now the drum tempo is locked into this tempo lane. So now let's highlight all these nodes and move them up or down. Yeah, I got to select them first. And now nothing has moved around. Everything is locked in. Go down like crazy. So cool. So then I'm going to bring in, let's go down here. And this is a guitar track from a live performance, totally unrelated to that drum riff that we've got. So I'm going to bring this in. Oh, hold up. Let's back it up here. Get rid of this track. See, we got to go into the project settings here and we got to constantly be adapting the mode for what we want to accomplish. So a little cumbersome, but I'm sort of glad that it's very particular. So on and align bars and beats. Let's get rid of this menu. Now let's bring in this guitar track. So there's a sample rate conversion because I think this came from video. It's analyzing the tempo of this track. You know, and there's a lot going on. Here we go. So now I'm going to line up this guitar beat to land with everything else. Check it out. All right, now let's highlight everything here and drag it up like crazy. So sweet. Now a caveat, if you've got guitar pads that just swell like for two minutes, probably gonna have a hard time locking it. At the same time, it's a pad and you probably don't need it to lock in that much. But all that to say that Smart Tempo here is analyzing transients and the less obvious transient activity that's going on, the harder time I'm going to believe it's going to have with analyzing and locking in your riffs. But rhythmic guitars, drums, probably vocals, you know, now we have this amazing facility where before it was very tedious. You could, you know, you could use flex and stretch out an audio file using option and holding the right end of the region, you know, and it'll adjust the length and the timing and stretch it, but it was never very scientific. And if you went into flex mode and tried to lock everything in, it was very long and tedious. So Logic does all the heavy lifting for you. And I am so stoked. It was like the only thing that I was at all interested in when it came to Ableton. And now we have it. So I hope that was helpful to you. As always, if this was helpful, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel or subscribing on the blog, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting videos, I'm posting content to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.